Of course, I have Rohan over there. Rohan over there in Canada. Big of yourself, my friend, my best, best friend. A pleasant afternoon to you all. If, of course, if you want to WhatsApp us and speak to us this evening, you can do so at 876 453 1444. We have with me, as always, our engineer Cassidy. Always there, beat and teach. So, good evening, Cassidy. Mr. Chambers, pleasant afternoon, and how are you? I am good. I, I'm happy to hear that. Um, we're going to be doing, I, I hope we're doing some recap. Uh, but before I, but before I do so, really, really, all along. <laughs> no, seriously, start over. Oh, that's <laughs> good evening, Mister Chambers. How good are you? Good evening. I'm so good. A little cat, a, a little birdie to tell me nobody wasn't hearing you at first. Is he? Yes. Yes. So I, I let me just repeat. I, I good don't evening. know why Cassidy silenced my mic. I don't call anybody. I, I shall I, not I, be silent. I don't call him even. I said little birdie <laughs> told me that uh, you weren't being heard on the air. All right. Um, before Mister Chambers and I jump into, how have you been though? I've been good. I've been good. Okay, good. Everything all right? Body paperwork, but I, getting there. I can imagine so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it is no secret um, to my listeners that tomorrow is, in fact, the big day. Mm -hmm. And so, Mr. Chambers, we have a few announcements, public service announcements, and between me and you, nobody tell Cassidy, we might just go over into Cassidy time this evening. Mm -hmm. um, what's the fact? <laughs> Uh, remember, you know, what's the fact? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, and so, <laughs> Cassidy, you joke me now, said. And so, um, tomorrow being the, the by-election in the parish of Portland, we have a few traffic changes, which I would like to announce, Mr. Chambers. And mm -hmm. um, even before I announce that, I want persons to remember that there are certain things that cannot happen Tomorrow, and of course, you ha can't have any spiritualized supremacies being open one hour before the poll open. Cassidy, I me can't hear my mic. One hour before the poll open, you can't have any spiritualized supremacies open. And so the poll open at 7 a.m. So from 6 o'clock, your bar is supposed to close. Of course, you know it shouldn't open in the first place. All right, um, six hours. Have you seen any tags? Have you noticed any tag? <laughs> well, let me look. Continue. Continue. Yeah, I can't see the other No, no tag. Okay. Not a tag. Mm -hmm. And so, um, good evening to Denise from Cornwall Barracks and Kevoy Chambers from Sunny Hill St. Thomas, present in class, of course, Andy from St. Thomas and Carla from Maple and Clarendon. Say so good evening, DG and Mr. Chambers. We're trying to um, be live on Facebook Live. We're yet waiting for our engineer to tag us. Um, we were told that we were live. So good evening to everyone on Styles FM, uh, Facebook live page. Oh, yes, see it here, tag. Y you're seeing it now? Yeah, me okay. see it now. Mm -hmm. And then after you tag, you know if you do, right? Yes, because, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when you tag, you know. You have taught me well, you know. Yeah, but you, you're, you're going to make certain, say, it not make a nice, because you know you all the, see there. Um, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after you do the, the watch party something. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so you're on your own. Yes. So good evening to everyone that has jo joined us on our Facebook Live page. All right, so remember I said that before the polls open tomorrow, um, all spirit license premises must be closed. Section 84. Continue. Ah, right there. <laughs> and go so ahead. we're going to go through that with you. Uh, six hours after the poll close, you know the clo poll close at 5 o'clock, um, Sergeant Clark had explained to you that um, the last person that entered the polling station at five, a police officer is going to stand in the line. So anybody that comes after that police officer will not be able to vote. Mm -hmm. And so the polls close at five o'clock and spirit lights premises are allowed to be open at least at, at six hours after the poll close. That runs us into 11 p.m. So you know by that time, you don't open nowhere. All right. Now, we have a few traffic changes tomorrow, but let me just say to you before I say that, that you're going to be noticing a large contingency, contingency of police officers and, 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 and military personnel tomorrow. It started from today. And so as the day progresses, 
tomorrow, you're going to see a lot of police officers that you have never seen before and also um, soldiers. We are asking persons to abide by the law. Don't give any trouble. Please, no trouble at all. If a police officer say to you, I'm giving you a lawful order to move and keep on moving, it's not a joke thing. Listen, it is a lawful order. And if you disobey, you have committed an offense. Listen, tomorrow is a very serious day and nothing must be taken for granted. Another thing that I want to remind persons, voters, you must not travel with any implement, cutting or stabbing or implement, no offensive weapon, no ice pick, no knife, nothing of that sort. And for the persons who are licensed firearm holders, your firearms will not be allowed in the polling station. Mm -hmm. So may I suggest to you that you find somewhere safe, do not leave it in your cars, please find somewhere at a station nearby, ask them to tell them you're going to vote, Ask them, please, um, have your license with you. Remember, if you're a licensed firearm holder, please to travel with your license and visit the nearest police station and ask them to give safekeeping until you finish voting. Mm -hmm. Or if there, are police of there will be police officers actually at every polling station. Look for a senior police officer or a police officer that, I that you can identify that, that is a police officer. And no discrimination, but no one-day police. Do not give your firearms to a one-day police, all right? Because they really and truly are just trained for the day, just use the buttons and so on and so forth. You not want to place your firearm in the arm of a one-day police, a, a one police. So I'm asking you, please, now leave your firearms with, a keep, with somebody um, on the component you're going to vote, which is, will be very, very temporary, just as a, until you go inside. So you find somewhere discreetly in a police vehicle or so on to say to an officer, you know, in a very discreet manner, I am a licensed firearm holder and I'm going inside to vote. Could you be so kind as mm -hmm. to? I'm sure that you'll be accommodated. Yes. Otherwise, you'll leave it at the nearest police station. Do not attempt to take your firearm into a polling station. It will not be allowed. And we don't want the whole world to know that you have a firearm. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, Mr. Chambers, we're going to be having minor traffic changes. Mm -hmm. And we're asking persons, the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Mr. Elbert Nelson, who is actually on location with a, a large contingent of police already, is asking the business people of Port Antonio to let take good wisdom. And if you could, he cannot, he's not giving you a command, he's asking you kindly to close at least 4 o'clock. Because he wants good sense to prevail. Mm -hmm. And so persons who normally close 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock is encouraged to close your businesses at 4 o'clock tomorrow evening because you might run in some difficulty. Now, the, the, the roads that will be closed will be Brian's Bay. All along that corridor to the courthouse, right up to Compre, going out to Bonebrook, no vehicle will be allowed to pass Brian's Bay, pass the gas station, pass courthouse, pass Coronation Bakery. All of that corridor, no vehicle, nobody will be allowed to pass through the barriers to come around there. All right? As of 4 p.m. tomorrow evening, unless you are an election worker, an official election worker, the police or the military. And so do not tell anybody. Uh, do not tell them at 4 o'clock you're going on a coronation and bake or go buy a bread. Here I tell you, you will not be allowed to pass the barriers. And is there a reason why it's being closed off? Yes, because the, the counting center is, in fact, the courthouse. I see. And yeah. so that is where <laughs> the, um, all the countings, all the ballots will proceed there. And so they are making certain that that, era, that complete era um, remains sterile. Right. And so they close it up, up at 4 o'clock. Now listen, the, other, the ulti uh, ultimate routes are you travel along Bonebrook Road, going around the school, past Stone Hill River, come around mm -hmm. that side. That is your, your, your route, or you go back road. Drop out back right at Rice Piece, and you are then on your way. Right. When you reach a free school now, you're not going to be able to go up where your courts is. You're going to have to go through the marina. Okay. And the vehicles going to the marina will then come out up at Farmy Building. 
All right, I'm not telling anybody about the West and East because we live in Portland, so we are mm -hmm. used. All right, so you go through a farm building, drop out right up a farm, go through a marina, drop out a farm building, and you come along the, side, the gas station, go Gideon Avenue, Gideon Avenue is a little road right beside NCV Bank, and you continue on Foreshore Road. So persons coming from Norwich End, you will, when you reach first and last bar, you're going to turn right. Go all the way around Stone Hill Road, come around Lighthouse, Springbank, and travel up. When you reach courts at, at free school, you're going to turn left through the marina. And that's at 4 o'clock as at well? Four, as of 4 o'clock, okay. until the, they say when. Mm -hmm. So you're going to turn, and when you reach Farmer Building, then you proceed beside the, the, the courthouse, beside NCB rather, and proceed. And is there any reason why that area is being closed off? It's up because the... the, the, the the, in the town square, they want to keep it sterile because we're going to be having one way traffic come the other end. I'm going to explain now why. Okay. When you come along, for sure, when you come at Arbor Street, coming from Prospect, when you reach Arbor Street and you reach at Texaco gas station, Blake Street, you're going to take that left turn at Blake Street. And when you reach William Street, you take a right turn. So William Street tomorrow at 4 o'clock will be a one-way in the opposite direction. So normally, William Street is a one-way going up. Now, William Street tomorrow even as a 4 o'clock will be a one-way going down. So when you're coming from Prospect, you proceed down right beside Texaco Gas Station, you turn left. At the end of Blake Street, you turn right. And when you drop back out the square, then you proceed all the way back down to Bonebrook and go around Bonebrook um, Bryansby and, and go your merry way. Is there any particular reason the town is being closed off? They are uh, closing off the town because they know that what, whatever, whichever political party um, is victorious, they are going to be having a meeting I see. in the square. And so they are from <laughs> early out making sure that the area is kept clear. No. So persons are asked to, one, close at 4 o'clock tomorrow evening to make certain that, you know, the workers get home and on time and so on, and that persons get off the street as best as possible. We do not foresee anything happening, but out of an abundance of caution, home is probably the best place for you to be. Mm -hmm. And so those are the announcements that I have. As soon as, when at the end of the program, I am going to repeat it once again, and that's at 4 o'clock tomorrow evening. One quick thing, to Mr. Chambers, that I see that has been, um, that I see that have been, persons have actually been jumping on too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it looks like we, we open a, a can of worms. Mm -hmm. The section 35. About the counterfoil? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about? Persons it? actually did not know. <laughs> and so even returning officers is saying that they did not know they were not returning officers, the persons that were trained. Mm -hmm. They have said to me that they heard it on the program and that they were told or informed that they must drop them in an envelope. And so they are, yes. And so they are now saying that when they went through their training, they were told that at the end of it, the counterfoils must be dropped in an envelope. And at the end, then the, 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 all the counterfoils would be destroyed. So they did say to be destroyed, but they were trained to drop them in an envelope. So it would be destroyed at a different time? At a different time. Now, what I, I can't speak to anything except the law. And so... Let's see if, they, if it, you, you have it there. Oh, yes, I have it here. Let's see if it lends room to that to the, kind to, of Okay, go ahead now, sir. The electron receiving the ballot paper shall forthwith enter one of the polling compartments and there make his ballot paper and there mark his ballot paper by making a cross with a black lead pencil within the space containing the name of the candidate for whom he intends to vote and he shall then fold the ballot paper as directed so that the initials and the numbers on the counterfoil can be seen without opening it and hand the paper to the presiding officer who shall without unfolding it, ascertained by examination of the initials and numbers appearing thereon, that it is the same paper as that delivered to the elector, and if the same he and if the same he shall subject to the provisions of section thirty eighth, forthwith, in full view of the voter and all others present, remove and this it says forthwith. What forthwith mean? Immediately. Okay, okay. Right there and then. Okay. 
this straw he shall and in view of the vote and all others present remove and destroy the co the counterfoil and deposit the ballot in the ballot. If there has been some amendment this, to, to this, I know um, many of my friends listen to the program, colleagues of mine. Mm -hmm. If you know of any amendment to this section, to the act, because I've looked at a few of the amendments and I'm not seeing that. Well, what Let happened, know, Mr. Chambers, it, is that they concur that it mm -hmm. must be destroyed. Ah, what they're saying, okay. though, is that the norm, the, the best practice that they normally use is that they destroy it after. So what happens if the electors are destroy it now in front of me? Well, that is where the problem is going to be because what we have done, um, inadvertently, of course, because we thought this is what was being done. So on our program, we have been just reading through the law, going through the law and reminding persons of what the law is. And so we have now inadvertently uh, and told persons what is to be done that is not normally done. And so if an elector go and say, I need my counterfoil to be destroyed in my Fort presence, forthwith, mm -hmm. I don't think they should object. Because Section 35, law. subsection 3, I, I don't uh, know how they are going to object unless there has been some amendment that I'm not aware of. Not that I know. And, and I of know course. that I'm not the repository of all knowledge, so I'm prepared to stand corrected. And so I'm saying if there's any of my colleagues who are listening who knows of any amendment that has been made to section 35, subsection 3, be kind enough to let me know because and I don't not, know of it. My glass is not working so well. Could you read section 39 for me? Mm -hmm. And section 39 says, every presiding officer who fails or neglects to perform any duty imposed upon him by section 37 or section 38 which is to immerse your finger. 38 speaks about immersing your finger. And I think section 37 speaks, um, speaks to um, your thumb, placing your thumb on the thing, yes. Um, giving your print and, 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 and satisfying the, satisfying the, the, um, the presiding officer as to your identity, I think, if I'm not incorrect. Mm -hmm. All right, so it says that if he fails to carry out his duty as imposed under section 37 and 38, he shall be guilty of an offence against this section and shall be liable on summer conviction before a parish judge to a fine not exceeding $10,000 or to be imprisoned with or without hard labour for any, any term not exceeding 12 months. And the parish judge may, in addition to imposing a fine or a term of imprisonment, order that such presiding officer be disqualified from holding any post as an election officer for a period of seven years from the date of conviction. Okay. Um, if, if you, section 38 has to do with immersing your finger. Mm -hmm. And it says that um, once, once the presiding officer is satisfied that the elector is suffering from some injury to his appropriate digit, which is of such a nature as to render it undesirable. Look for 37 for me. Yeah. To render it undesirable for him to immerse such a digit in the electoral ink, the presiding officer may require him to immerse in such ink any other digit. So it speaks to immersing your finger in the, in the electoral ink. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it references section 35. Because mm -hmm. it says, upon receiving any ballot paper, subsection 1, mm -hmm. from any elector in accordance with the provisions, provisions of subsection 3 of okay. section 35, okay. and that is the right, presiding right. officer shall, before removing the counterfoil mm -hmm. from such ballot, if the elector has an appropriate digit, satisfy himself that there does not appear upon such digit yes. any substance. Because, by the way, have you heard the latest um, announcement by the political ombudsman, Donna Parchment Brown. No. The recent announcement I was listening just now says that there have been reports mm -hmm. that one, vote buying, we're going to come to that, yes. and also that persons are um, being told mm. to put their finger in ink. I heard it too. I heard it too, but they would have to. And and one thing I can tell you, I I, I find that quite strange. Who well, would I, come I up to me and tell me put my finger in? I I I am sure it is it is a rumor. I'm sure. I'm, I'm positive it's a rumor because nobody could. But what? And I, and if you put your finger in any ink, if even if you try to wash it off, mm -hmm. when you go to vote. They have the mechanism there to look to see if your finger was already in any ink, mm -hmm. and you'll not be allowed to vote. Exactly, mm -hmm. because after and not only that, it is you read all the even that it was an offence 
to mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Did you find section 37? Yes, there? I did find section 37. Uh, right. And it said, that subject to, to the provisions us. of section 40. Every, oh, me, I don't know. I want to go to law school now because every time you go in a section, you send you somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I want to do it. You, you cross reference. So, <laughs> subject to the provision of section 40, every presiding officer shall refuse to deliver any ballot paper to any elector unless he's satisfied that there does not appear mm-hmm. A, upon the appropriate digit of such an elector, there you go. or B, in the case of an elector, would the presiding officer is satisfied is suffering from any an injury mm-hmm. to the appropriate digit upon any of the digits of such select elector rather any mark of the electoral ink mm-hmm. so both section 37 and 38 speaks to the electoral ink yes and so he's saying if the presiding officer doesn't satisfy himself mm-hmm. as he ought to mm-hmm. in respect of whether or not a, a person has a mark on his finger or has an ink on his finger, electoral ink on his finger, then he will be liable to be um, to be convicted of an offence. But the, the yes. sections that we, 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 we deal with here, there are no secrets. And so for the persons that are proceeding to vote, you can always go on the internet. It's a mm-hmm. representation of the, the People's People Act. Act. People Act. The People Act. Mm-hmm. It's people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I say peoples. Because it's tempting to do. Uh, yes, because it, it shows ownership of... Mm-hmm. Um, let me see if I get it again. Go on the, 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 the website and look for the representation of the People Act mm-hmm. and scroll down to section 35. It is actually on page 38.03. So go on section 35 and actually go on sub- section 3. Print it off and walk it with you now. Or walk, we don't know it. Or walk, it, we don't know. <laughs> Whichever way, we don't walk together. Yes. <laughs> and so when you go and just nicely say to the person that um, that my counterfoil is to be destroyed in my presence and the presence of everyone here. Destroy don't mean tear in two. It means tear fan, 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 or cut up. If, and and the, the supervisors and the, the workers are the only persons who are supposed to have scissors. So nobody go there tomorrow with scissors and carry scissors to cut up my counter file <laughs> because you'll be arrested and charged. And Don't, DG never says so. No, so I did not say. I was carrying scissors to cut up nothing. No, they, are, they will have scissors there to um, assist you to cut that counter file. All right, Mr. Chambers. Yes. So this evening now. So this evening, we are going to look quickly at section 84 because that is what it started with. Right. Um, It says the holder of a town town retail license or a village retail license Mm -hmm. or a tavern license Mm -hmm. granted under the Spirit License Act shall cause the license premises to be closed to the public on election day during the period beginning one hour Mm. before the hour appointed for the opening of the poll. Mm-hmm. And ending six hours after the closing of the poll. And Sergeant Clark um, spoke to this when she was here mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Subsection 2 says the holder of a wholesale license or a town of license. Uh, you, have to, you'll, you'll have to tell me what a town of license mm-hmm. when you come back on Friday. Or uh, not sure, when you come back Friday, on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> or a hotel license. Or a special auto license or a club license granted under the Spirit License Act shall not sell or cause to be sold any alcoholic liquor on election day Mm -hmm. or cause to be sold any alcoholic liquor on election day during the period beginning one hour before the hour appointed for the opening of the poll Mm -hmm. and ending six hours after the closing of the poll. Mm -hmm. And any person who contravenes the provisions of this section shall be guilty of an offence and shall be liable on summary conviction before a parish court to a fine not less than five thousand dollars, nor more than twenty thousand dollars. This must be one of them that they're going to fix. No uh, less than five thousand dollars, <laughs> nor more, more than, than twenty thousand dollars, and in default of payment to imprisonment with or without hard labor for a term not exceeding six, six months. months. All right. Um, so you can't. You're not allowed to. Um, to you're not allowed to have that kind of thing. Um, your your bar operating during during the season. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. I want now to move to section 91 because it also speaks to 
it speaks to some of the things that was mentioned by <laughs> the by the political ombudsman, ombudsman just now because the ombudsman on um, radio just now in the newscast said that she got reports of um, allegations yes that there are certain um, trading okay that is occurring um, and to put it bluntly she said vote buying I think it's a rumor though yes. but she has so so, so mm. I want to address the section of the legislation that speaks to that. You want to start off? 91, subsection 1, says the following persons shall be deemed guilty of bribery within the meaning of this act. Every person who directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf gives, lends, or agrees to give or lend or offers promises or promises to procure or endeavor to procure any money or valuable consideration to or for any voter or to or for any person on behalf of any voter or to or for any person in order to induce any voter to vote or refrain from voting or corruptly does any such act as aforesaid on account of such voter having voted or refrained from voting at any election and every person who directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf gives or procures or agrees to give or procure or offers promises or promises to procure or to endeavor to procure any office place or employment to or for any voter or to or for any person on behalf of any voter or to or for any other person in order to induce such voter to vote or refrain from voting or corruptly does any such act as aforesaid on account of any voter having voted or refrained from voting at any election. Mm -hmm. And subsection C says, Every person who directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf makes any such gift, loan, offer, promise, procurement or agreement as aforesaid to or for any person in order to induce such persons to procure or endeavor to procure the return of any person as an elected member of the House of mm -hmm. Representatives or the vote of any voter at an election. And every person who upon or in consequence of any such gift, loan, offer, promise, procurement, or agreement, procures or engages, promises or endeavors to procure the return of any person as an elected member. Ah, you know what this is saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. if you try to bribe anybody yes. Yes, to return as a member of parliament, right? Mm -hmm. As an elected member of the House of Representatives or the vote of any voter, voter at any election, he says every person who advances or pays or cause to be paid any money to do or to the use of another person with the intent that such money or any path thereof shall be expended in bribery at any election or who knowingly pays or causes to be paid any money to any person in discharge or repayment of any money wholly or in part expended in bribery at any so election. So this is simply saying if you give any money mm -hmm. to get anybody to vote in a particular way, mm -hmm. yes, you are also guilty of an offense. Friends. Yes. Kemoy, okay, good evening. Mm -hmm. And before that, if you give any gift, loan, mm -hmm. or any, any offer so mm -hmm. that the person can vote a particular way, you are guilty of an offense. Yep. If you give any promise or any favor to any House of Representatives to get them back in as a member of Parliament, mm -hmm. yes, that is an, you might find yourself guilty of, of an offense mm -hmm. as well. And every voter who before during any election, directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf, receives, mm -hmm. agrees, mm -hmm. or contracts for any money, mm -hmm. gift, loan, or valu valuable consideration, office, 
place or employment. And when he said office, yes, mm. forget a post. That's yes. what it means, a post in a big job, as mm. some persons will say. Or any place or employment, same thing. Mm. Yes, mm. forget a little work. Right. Yes, for himself, either for himself, the person will do it. If right, he do it for himself for or else. for anybody else, mm-hmm. for voting or green to vote or refri- to, f- to to you mm-hmm. do it so that they can, can vote or don't vote or don't vote mm-hmm. yes or green to refrain from voting at any election, and G says every person who after any election, directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf receives any money or valuable consideration on account of any person having voted or refrained from voting or having induced any other person to vote or refrain from voting at any election. So this means that if after election you then get some money because you voted in a particular way or you didn't go and vote, Yes. yes? It is and you're going to find although yourself guilty of an, even though the election has passed, you're going to find yourself guilty. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what is going on. I don't on see this anything happening. I, mm. I think Facebook have a problem. Yes. Right? No, it also says that the following person shall be deemed guilty of treating within the meaning of this act. Yes? Mm-hmm. Every person who corruptly by himself or by any other person, either before during or after an election, directly or indirectly, gives or provides or pays wholly or in part the expenses of giving or providing any, listen, any food, drink, entertainment, or provision to or for any person for the purpose of corruptly influencing that person or any other person to vote or refrain from voting or at such election, or an account of such person or any other persons having voted or refrained from voting at such election. Mm -hmm. And it says, every elector who corruptly accepts or take any such food, drink, entertainment, or, so it's not just the person who give or offer or treat. So if I put on any party, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. and give some people some food, <laughs> that is what this is talking about. Yeah. Yes? yeah. Or you're going to a community and you buy out the entire bar. Yes, for everybody um, drink something. <laughs> yes, that is what this is talking about. Can you imagine? Yes, so it, it is covering those scenarios where treats are given, yeah, um, entreaties for persons to... Acting in a pr- undue, vote in a particular un- way. Undue influence. Yes, section 92. Now, you see, sometimes, <laughs> you know, you may not give any money. You may not treat. Yes. Yes, but you may do something. Yes. Or your actions may be in such a way that it will influence someone to do or not do something. So, section 92 it addresses says, that. every person... I'm going to say this slowly. Mm-hmm. Every person who directly or indirectly by himself or by any other person on his behalf makes use of or threatens to make use of any force, violence or restraint or inflicts or threatens to inflict by himself or by any other person any temporal or spiritual injury, Mm -hmm. damage, harm or loss open or against any person in order to induce or compel such person to vote or refrain from voting or on account of such person having voted or refrained from voting at an, any election or who by abduction, duress, or any fraudulent contravance impedes or prevents the free exercise of the franchise of any elector or thereby compels, induces, or prevails upon any elector either to give or to refrain from giving his vote at any election shall be guilty of undue influence within the <coughs> meaning of this act. All right. Mm. See? So it covers those scenarios where persons feel pressured. 
Yes. In doing or not doing something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And persons who engage in those kind of activities may also find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Now, Section 93, remember we had spoken about a situation where someone may have gone where there might be two persons who have the same name. Yes. And you may vote and the presiding officer must satisfy himself as mm -hmm. to the true identity of the second person. All right. Mm -hmm. Section 93 says, every person who at any election applies for a ballot paper in the name of another person, whether that name be the name of, the, of a person living or dead mm -hmm. or of a fictitious person, or who, having voted once at any election, applies at the same election mm -hmm. for a ballot paper in his own name, mm -hmm. shall be guilty of personation within the meaning of this act. Do not vote once and go back to try and vote again. <laughs> yes, do not try to vote in any dead person's name. Mm. You might be, you might find yourself on the wrong side of the mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. And Sergeant Clark will be there to cart you <laughs> off down up to Israel now, Mansion Hill or yes. Castle. Yes. The, the section 94 yes. speaks of the penalty for mm -hmm. bribery treating for of undue influence. Yes. And it says every person who is guilty of bribery, treating or undue influence shall on summary conviction before a parish court is liable to be a fine not less than $20,000, nor more than $80,000, or to imprisonment with or without our labor for a term not less than three years, nor more than five years. And the parish court may, in addition to such fine and imprisonment, order that the person be disqualified from holding any post of election officer for a period not less than seven years for the, from the date of conviction. So you see, up to five years you can get for doing it. Yes. Young people, mm -hmm. I've been speaking to you since we've started this program. Mm -hmm. Young folks who are voting for the first time, do not allow anybody mm -mm. to influence you mm -mm. to commit any of these offenses. Mm -hmm. All right? Go, cast your vote, mm -hmm. go back home. That's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. Exercise your franchise. Nothing more is required of you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Section 95 mm -hmm. says, Every person who is guilty of personation or of aiding, abetting, counseling, or procuring the commission of the offense of personation shall be guilty of a felony. And on conviction, therefore, before, before a parish court, be liable to a fine not less than $10,000, nor more than $40,000, mm -hmm. or to imprisonment for a term not less than two years, nor more than five years. And on conviction, therefore, thereof, before a circuit court. Circuit? Yes. <laughs> Personation is a serious thing, yes. you know. That's like stealing your, your, your TRN oh, or your yes. social mm -hmm. security. Yes, it's a mm -hmm. serious thing, man. All right? Um, so if it's a circuit court, you shall be liable to a fine not less than $50,000, nor more than $200,000, or to imprisonment for such term as the court may impose, being not less than five years. So you cannot less. get less than five, than five years. Yes. Can't get less than five years. Mm. Young people, I'm speaking to you again. Do not let anybody influence you to go to the polling stations to personate anybody. Mm. Do not try and vote dead two or alive. times, whether the person is dead or alive. It is an offense and you might find yourself in custody. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, I also want to look at section 98. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at all the offenses that can be committed in respect of an election. Right. Every person who fraudulently defaces or destroys any ballot paper or the official mark on any ballot paper, remember, are you talking about getting one ballot? Oh, yes. And it, the, the, officer, the presiding officer can deem it a spoiled ba mm -hmm. ballot by making a certain mark on it mm -hmm. and then handing you another ballot paper. Mm -hmm. And if you then so reveal the nature of your vote or do something to cause the vote to 
to cause your vote to be so exposed. The presiding officer can take it and usher you out, mm -hmm. but you can also find yourself oh, yes. in trouble with the law. He said, if you deface or destroy any ballot paper or the ballot official or the official mark on any ballot paper or without due authority supplies a ballot paper to any person, that's mm. why the presiding officer have to check when you come back, you know. Yes. Without opening the, 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 the ballot paper, have to check and examine to see whether or not it is a ballot that he supplied. Yes. Yes. So if you, without due authority, supply a ballot paper to any person or fraudulently put into any ballot box any paper other than the ballot paper which is authorized by law to put in or fraudulently takes out of the polling station any ballot paper, you shall be mm. guilty of a misdemeanor and be liable on summary conviction before a parish judge to a fine of not less than $20,000 nor more than $80,000 or to imprisonment with or without hard labor for a term not less than three years mm -hmm. nor more than mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. Yes, subsection two says, Every person who without due authority destroys, takes, opens, or otherwise interferes with any ballot box mm -hmm. or any packet of ballot papers, then in use of the purposes of any election, <laughs> shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and be liable on summary conviction before a parish court to a fine not less than $20,000 nor more than $80,000 or to imprisonment with or without hard labor for a term not less than three years, nor more than five years. You cannot take up the people ballot, ballot box. box. <laughs> as simple as that, yes? And Don't I, attempt to. I'm Mr. Chambers, I'm about you know, but me tell you something. Mm -hmm. There the police and soldier that is coming here. Mm -hmm. Trust me. I, I will tell persons that I do not think that it is humanly possible. To steal any ballot box over here. And you know, subsection 3 speaks to attempt. Subsection 3 <laughs> says, any attempt to commit any offense specified in this section shall be punishable in the manner in which the offense itself, itself is punishable. punishable. So if you even attempt Tempt, to do it, yeah. you shall get the same punishment. In any information or prosecution for an offense in relation to the ballot boxes, ballot papers, and any other things in use at an election, the property in such ballot shall may be stated in, or things may be stated to be in the returning officer at such election. All right, so that's um, um, administrative. If a presiding officer is not present in the polling station, it's an offense, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Failure of presiding officer to be present at a polling, polling station, station without reasonable, reasonable cause on election day to be present by Every person that an appointed a presiding officer pursuant to section 67 who fails without reasonable cause on election day to be present by 7 o'clock in the afternoon. In, in the forenoon. The forenoon. Same <laughs> afternoon. To open the polling station to which he's assigned for the, the, the taking of the poll or to return to the return officer for the constituency in which he is a pre presiding officer within 30 minutes before the opening of the poll. All the election material specified in section 32, subsection one, in circumstances where he is not able to be present at the polling station by the time specified in paragraph A, so that the return officer may take arrangements for the opening of the polling station, shall be guilty of an offense and shall be liable on summary conviction before a parish court to a fine not exceeding $100,000 and in default of payment to a term of imprisonment not exceeding six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Section 99, mm. duty of secrecy. <laughs> Every officer, clerk or agent in attendance at a polling station shall maintain and aid in maintaining the secrecy let me say that again. They must maintain <laughs> or aid in maintaining the secrecy of the voting in such station and shall not communicate except for some purpose authorized by law before the poll is closed to any person, any information as to the name or number on the register of votes, voters or any voter who has or has not applied for a ballot paper 
or voted at that station, and no person whosoever shall interfere with or attempt to interfere with a voter when making his vote or otherwise attempt mm -hmm. to obtain in the polling station any information as to the candidate for whom any voter in such station is about to vote or has voted or as to the number of the ballot paper given to any voter at any station. And every such officer, clerk, agent in attendance at the counting of the votes shall maintain and aid in maintaining the secrecy of the voting mm -hmm. and shall not attempt to ascertain at such counting the number of any ballot paper or communicate any information obtained at such counting as to the candidate for whom any vote is given in any particular ballot paper. Mm -hmm. And it goes on further to say, no person shall directly or indirectly induce any voter to display his ballot paper after he has marked it so as to make known to any person the name of the candidate or for or against whom he has so marked his vote. And any person who acts in contravention of the provisions of this section mm -hmm. shall be liable on some conviction before a parish judge to a fine not less than $20,000 nor more than $80,000 or to imprisonment for a term not less than three years, nor more than five years. And the magistrate may, in addition to such fine or imprisonment, order that the person be disqualified from holding any post of election officer for a period not less than seven years from the date of conviction. Mr. Nicholas Chambers, as I look on the clock, I am tempted to say to you, finally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think there's any other section that not at we all. Not need at all. to trouble ourselves with at this time. Precisely. So I want you to go over those road changes. Oh, definitely. Um, um, so that the listeners... I was, I was trying to look. I want to be able to tell them um, about the, clo the, 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 the light, spirit light supremacists. I want mm, you section to Section 80, 84. Oh, that's what I'm looking for because mm -hmm. I, I want to tell them where they can look for it. Yes, section um, 84. So they can make certain that they're in the know. So that's section 84, subsection 1, 2, and 3 tells us about the closing of the spirit light supremacists. People, please abide by the law and know that tomorrow, which is the by-election day, one hour before the poll opens at that, um, the poll opens at seven o'clock, and so all spirit light supremacists must be closed at least one hour before that six a.m. So you and I know them now about that open, right? Mm, mm -hmm. Cut out to that too early, and so six hours after the poll is closed, you're allowed to open. So let us do the maths now. The poll closed at five o'clock and six hours would be 11 p.m. Go and read the act and see what time you're supposed to close originally, and then you'll know if you can open it at all. All right? Now for the traffic changes, we're going to be having temporary traffic changes tomorrow, starting Be at Before you start that, mm -hmm. I want to look at section 103. I know our time is short. We don't want to go any over. person who is convicted of any offense declared to be an illegal practice under this act shall, in addition to any other penalty for such offense, be incapable during a period of 10 years Whoa. from the date of his conviction of being registered as an elector or voting at any election of a member of the House of Representatives or of any parish council or of a council of the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation. You can't vote for 10 years. You can't vote. For 10 years. Of being an elected member of... You can't even be a member of parliament either. For 10 years. Yes. Okay. And if you are a candidate and you are found to engage in any of these illegal practices. That 10 years goes to 15 years. If you are a candidate. Yes, and you're, and you're disqualified from holding any post as an election officer for a period of 15 years. Thank you very much. Word to the wise is sufficient. Word to the wise. Um, finally, now let me just tell you about the quick the traffic changes. Mm -hmm. um, somebody calling you, Cassidy. Um, about the traffic changes. Cassidy, somebody calling you. About the traffic changes tomorrow evening at 4 o'clock, we're going to be encouraging persons to the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Mr. Elbert Nelson, is asking business persons in Port Antonio to let good sense prevail and close at 4 o'clock. Please uh, to see to it that everybody is kept in safe. And so uh, we, do not, um, we do not foresee any problems. But just to make certain that, you know, your workers get out and get home in time, we're asking persons to close at 4 o'clock. 
Um, you're going to be seeing a large contingency of police. We just started today, but we'll get um, in the wee hours of the morning, you'll see a number of police officers and military personnel. Please, citizens of Portland, please to cooperate with the police officers. Please to make certain that you're in the know. And remember, do not walk with any form of offensive weapon tomorrow more than any other day. Lysa firearm owners, please do not go to the polling stations with your firearms. If you have them, please proceed to the nearest police station. Ask them to um, respectfully and nicely, nicely rather, along with your license, do not leave your license. If they could keep it for you just for the duration of you voting. If you happen to reach a polling station with it, please speak to a police officer in uniform or in a mark vest privately in how he or she can consider a weapon for you until you mark your vote and get out. And so traffic change is starting tomorrow evening at 4 o'clock. The entire corridor from Bryans Bay all the way up to Comprehensive High School will be closed, people. And so as of 4 o'clock, you cannot proceed through that barrier. The Port Antonio Courthouse will be the county area that all ballots will be taken to. And so that entire area will be sterile. It doesn't matter what you're coming around here to do. You will not be allowed to go to the barriers unless your election official, election um, officer or police or military person Please do not give any form of excuse why you have to go. You'll not be allowed. Now, the traffic changes are that the persons coming from Norwich, Kingston, all around, will turn at Bryansby on your right-hand side there, as you could first and last, travel all the way around to Stony Lighthouse, Springbank, and go back out to Rice Peace and proceed. When you reach free school, you're going to actually turn left through the marina and you're going to drop out right at that road a little before farming building. Turn right and then turn left at NCB Bank at Gideon Avenue and proceed on Foreshore Road. All right? If you're coming from Prospect, you're going to come on Arbor, on Arbor Street as usual. And when you reach Blake Street, that's in the vicinity of Texaco, you're going to turn left Blake Street. It's normally a one way going one direction. It's going to be a one way going the other direction tomorrow evening. When you reach the end of Blake Street, you're going to turn right down William Street. Remember, William Street is a one way going up. Tomorrow evening at 4 o'clock, it will be a one way going down. So all the traffic coming from Prospect will come along um, Arbor Street, turn left on Blake Street, and then right on William Street, proceed out to the town square, and travel all the way going down. Please remember these traffic changes and to abide by them. And so the polls close at 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. We're encouraging persons to go out very early tomorrow and vote and get out. Remember at 5 o'clock, remember you have by law, everybody that is working must be allowed by law to go and vote. They're not doing you any favor. Three hours. Three hours you're allowed. So nobody's doing you any favor tomorrow. You must be allowed to go and vote. Go out early at five o'clock. Don't bother run and say, why me and some police are afraid. Angel, so let me, it cannot work. At five o'clock, the last police of the person at the back of the line, a police officer is going to stand at that line and that's where the line cut off. Please remember the law. Remember what Mr. Chambers and I have taught you. And so please conform to the law. Do not let anybody threaten you or intimidate you. It is your democratic right to go out and vote. And I want to say thanks to the listeners on yes. um, Radio Land, in Radio Land, those who have joined us on WhatsApp and those who have joined us on Styles of Him Facebook Live and who have joined the watch party with myself and my co-host, DG Angel. I want to say thanks to everyone that has tuned in. I want to say thanks to our kind sponsors, Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Braham's Texaco, uh, Task Property Appraisals Company Limited, bringing quality service to you. Of course, our contributors, Toya Nails at Shop Number 6, Rosemary Plaza. That's Morant Bay, St. Thomas at, you can get her at 876-426-5066. Our contributor, Sadie, from Castle, your castle rather, sent and want to say thanks. Mr. Errol Barnes from Baltimore and MT Landscaping Services. Pleasant afternoon to you again, Mr. 